Hi, I'm Rongji. In today's video, I will talk about how to do Power Amplify Envelope Tracking Test by using XAP N9055M0E. Here's the agenda. Let's get started. You may ask why need envelope tracking for the PA test. Let's look at the block diagram of a typical transmitter system. For conventional RF amplifier, the power supply is designed to be a fixed DC. This kind of design has high transmitter efficiency for the systems like GSM, which has a form of modulation with no amplitude variations. However, in the modern communication systems like 5G NAR or Wi-Fi 7, in order to achieve increased data throughput in limited radio frequency bandwidth, more complicated modulation is used like OFDM. These waveforms have an amplitude element to the modulation, and this needs to be preserved. To achieve this, the amplifier must be able to accommodate the peaks without distortion. In turn, this means the signal must be within the linear region of the amplifier. In fact, the peak to average power ratio, or called PAPR, is the key to the efficiency level that can be achieved. As you may know, the peak to average power ratio increases significantly as mobile phone systems have migrated from the basic 3G UMTS through 4G LTE to 5G NAR. As showing the right graph for the fixed voltage supply, the problem with high peak to average ratio waveform is that the IF amplifier has to be provided with power to accommodate the peaks and only use this capability for short periods when the peaks are there. The rest of time, this power is dissipated as heat, which means the amplifier runs at a low efficiency level. The consequence of the PA inefficiency is very practical. The smartphone will be harder and their batteries will run out quickly. At the same time, mobile and broadcast network operators need to pay a lot for the wasted energy. So envelope tracking is a technique to increase the power amplifier efficiency dramatically. As shown in the graph, the basic principle of the envelope tracking is to constantly adjust the supply voltage of the power amplifier according to the envelope of IF input signal, so that the PA can always operate at high efficiency. In baseband, envelope detector generates envelope by taking the magnitude of I and Q waveform, which is the root of I squared plus Q squared. The magnitude of the signal is not the ideal signal for envelope tracking power supply. To obtain the maximum efficiency, the magnitude of the signal is often modified by shaping. A shaping table is then developed to map the signal magnitude to the required voltage supply on the PA. This shaping table determines the characteristics of the ET system, so system designers spend a lot of time and effort to optimize shaping tables. The shaped envelope is then supplied to envelope tracking power supply, or called ETPS. Now you know the reasons why we need envelope tracking here. It can reduce heat dissipation, increase battery life, and improve the power amplifier performance. We've already seen how DPD technology improved PA performance before. If you are not familiar with this part, please go to other videos in this YouTube channel. The links I put in the description box as well. In today's video, you will see envelope tracking can further improve the amplifier performance. In this slide, you can see that for the 5G NRFR1 20 MHz test model 3.1 signal, ACP and EVM results both have dramatic improvement with ET technology applied. Now, let's talk about key side solutions for the PAET test. N9055M0E is power amplifier measurement application running on the X-series analyzers. We've already seen how it works for the PADPD measurement with 5G NAR and uh, Wi-Fi signal in the former videos. So in this year, it supports the PA envelope tracking measurement as well. 
There are two solutions for the PAET test. One is based on the benchtop instruments, which is signal generator VXG with two channels, plus X-series analyzer UXA or PXA platform. Another one is based on the modular instruments, which is PXIE VXT plus AWG. Now let's talk about the first solution. This is a closed loop control for the PAET test. As you can see, the signal generator VXG has two channels. Channel two is used for the IF signal generation, feeds the IF signal into the power amplify input. Channel one is used for the envelope generation which connects to the ETPS input parts of DUT. The X-series analyzer behaves as the primary instrument to control the VXG to generate the envelope waveform and the reference waveform according to the settings configured in the Power Amplify test app. Next, let's look at the modular solutions. There are five modules you need here. First, you should have a PXIE traces such as M9019A or M9010A. Next, the controller module is necessary here for the RF signal generation and the signal analysis. VXT transceiver module is used, which integrates the signal generator and the signal analyzer internally. In order to generate the envelope waveform, PXIE aperture waveform generator is used as well. Finally, you need a module to give the system reference frequency. Oscilloscope is not necessary, but it's helpful to monitor the timing alignment between IF signal and the envelope waveform. Here's a feature summary for these two different solutions. They have a little bit difference here. We are constantly working to update and enhance the software, such as automatic timing alignment will be covered in the next release. So please follow us with latest features. I will give you a brief introduction of ET configuration you can do with these two solutions. For solution one on benchtop instruments, shipping table function is available. You can edit shipping table using editor or record the shipping table file. Meanwhile, it supports envelope waveform generation settings with the ETPS voltage settings. So for the ETPS voltage settings, let's take a brief overview of envelope voltage mapping. As we can see from the derived equation, we know that differential voltage or reference voltage equals to the single-ended shipping table output voltage minus offset voltage divided by the ETPS gain. N9055 M0E follows this rule and automatically controls a VXG to set differential envelope voltage value for the waveform generation. For solution to our modular instruments, currently, although it only supports to download the envelope waveform to the generator, it still has an advantage on its test speed. Now you have an idea about key side two solutions for the PAET test. Next, I will give you a live demo. This demo is based on the Solution 2 modular instruments. You will learn following features in this demo. Let's start with connection configuration at first. So before doing the PAET test, you need to do the cable connection as shown in the diagram. After that, you need software to config this hardware interface. In the next live demo, you will see how to use software to config trigger port settings, reference frequency, and the VXT transceiver module. Let's launch PXIE Traces SFP to config trigger port settings. Please ensure Allow Control is clicked on. Let's route uh, PXI0 to trigger one output for the monitoring use. Route uh, trick two input to the PXI0. Then we can config system reference frequency to 10 MHz. Next, we can run launch modular transceiver. The existing VXT modules will be listed here. Let's select slot 8 module, then press run selected. You will see accepts its initializing and preloading measurement applications. This may take several seconds. Now it is ready for use. Next, let's see how to do the power amplifier measurement setup. Click on the tab of the main tab to open up this mode measurement view selector screen. Select power amplifier mode, and if you have a license for it, this will be available for you to select. Then press OK. 
In superior amplifier measurement, let's set the carrier frequency at 2.1 GHz. Next, let's go to the math setup, set measurement standard. In this case, let's select 5 GNR, 20 MHz FR1. In signal generator tab, ensure IF output is on. VXT module integrates SA and SG internally, so on the top bar we can see that the information shows its local horse connected and the trigger is internal. Now we can configure the reference signal which SA can play back. Go to the reference signal tab, select waveform type, signal studio, select the waveform file which we prepared before. A message box will pop up shows that the reference signal loaded successfully. In order to make fast measurement, we can set the measurement time to one subframe. We can see the pre-DPD measurement result is in the yellow color, and in AMAM graph, it shows PA is in the linear region. In order to see how envelope tracking can improve PA performance, we need to set PA to its nonlinear region. So let's go to the Amplify tab, set max input power value at first to protect power amplifier, and then for the loss in, loss out, PA gain, and the input power value, let's set to its compression state. Actually, you can make the same EVM measurement like 5 GNR mode or WLM mode inside the PA mode if you have a required license. In this case, we use 5 GNR signal, so go to the PA mass tab, select EVM, set the radio format to 5 GNR, and toggle on EVM. Press preset from 5 GNR. All demodulation settings in 5 GNR mode are synchronized in PA mode now. Restart the measurement, then we can get the same 5 GNR demodulated EVM results in the PA mode. After that, let's see how to do envelope tracking configuration. Go to the Envelope Tracking tab. Press Envelope SG and the ETPS settings. In Envelope Signal Generator tab, input AWG slot number we used. Here is the slot 9. Then press Connect. AWG information will show up once it connects successfully. Next, you need to configure trigger source to PXI0 and set the sample rate and the ETPS voltage as well. Now you can download the envelope waveform to the arbitrary waveform generator. The PAET measurement starts automatically when you turn on the envelope tracking. And you can see that ACP and the EVM results are both improved but still not so good. Now let's see how time alignment will influence ACP and the EVM results. To do that, Let's open up the oscilloscope screen. We can see that RF signal and the ET signal are not aligned. ET signal is ahead of RF signal with nearly 459 nanoseconds. So let's go back PA test app and there's that envelope delay value here. Now you can see ACP and EVM results have further improvement. And from oscilloscope screen, we can see RF signal and the ET signal are aligned. Next, let's see how ET can further improve PA performance after DPD. As we can see, after DPD, EVM have improvement but not good for the ACP results. For the ET demo purpose, so I did not generate a reference signal with off-sampling or CFR method for the DPD test. If you are not familiar with this part, please go to other videos talking about PA DPD measurement in the description box. N9055EM0E PA test app supports the feature that you can save and extract DPD model and the pre-distorted waveform. So we can easily download envelope waveform based on the pre-distortion. Now you can enable envelope tracking. We can see that with envelope tracking applied, ACP and EVM results have further improvement than before. To learn more and to download a free trial, visit us at these websites. Thanks for watching. Thank you.